Hello everyone, ah the holiday season, you know every weekend we find ourselves doing some holiday themed activity with our kids. Last weekend we made our own cards, this weekend we're baking cookies and of course we're going to do something for our feathered friends. If you never watched our episode about making edible wreaths for birds or if you don't remember how to do that, here's a quick recipe. So basically to make one wreath you will need dried fruits, fresh or frozen cranberries, gelatin, warm water, melted suet or beef tallow or any other fat, natural peanut butter, flour and a mix of seeds. Start by putting a, a bunch of fruits at the bottom of the whichever container you're using so that could be dried fruits or the cranberries then dilute gelatin in warm water and add the rest of the ingredients reserve some fruits for the top layer to make it prettier then mix it all up pour it over the fruits first and then lay out the rest of the fruits on the top let this sit for 24 hours come back the next day flip it over and attach whatever thing you want to suspend it by outside the little wreaths that we made two years ago were very popular with our bird lover friends enjoy it hi sue regarding your question as to whether birds mourn the loss of a dead partner here's some further thoughts on the issue First, I'm willing to concede that your budgie may well have felt some loss when her cage mate died. There are so many strange cases out there where a cat has adopted a brood of ducklings or a dog has mothered a kitten. I do have a hard time explaining them. Most certainly, there have also been innumerable cases of dogs mourning the loss of their owners, like that famous tale of the Japanese dog now made into a movie. And I could never explain to my ethology students why a polar bear would engage in play behavior with sled dogs. When it comes to wild birds, I'm afraid I'm going to dig in my heels. There's really no room for emotion when it comes to mating behavior in our feathered friends. I sometimes give a talk at bird and nature festivals entitled How Birds Do It, and it's rife with examples of sexual behavior that has nothing to do with sentimentality. I'm talking about infidelity, divorce, rape, and even homosexual necrophilia, anything to pass on genes to the next generation. We did a study on mate replacement in wild American kestrels whereupon we temporarily removed the males from some breeding pairs. Those males were replaced by new and sometimes within a day. Simply put, there's no room for mourning behavior. It just not would serve any adaptive purpose in the wild. We gave up commercial wrapping paper years ago and every year we tried to use something, reuse something in our household to wrap our presents. In the past we've used old newspapers, old circular papers. This year we've been saving our cardboard boxes. Kids and I actually have been painting them with gouache because gouache is biodegradable and then we will use these boxes in our garden in the spring what i'm also seeing there's a trend of people using fabric kitchen towels to wrap their presents as well i've seen baskets being used just to place presents in them and also glass jars to place smaller items to gift them like this so people can use the glass jars in their households let me know what you're doing for wrapping paper this year tatiana has been chasing after me for quite some time to do some reports on some local birds living with me here in the Baja where I spend my winters. And speaking of chasing, I can't think of a better bird to start with than the greater Roadrunner. Believe me, they look nothing like that bird in the long-running Warner Brothers cartoon series. In fact, they look a lot like a highly emaciated chicken with a long skinny tail. Roadrunners reach two feet from their sturdy bill to a white tail tip with a bushy blue-black crest and mottled plumage that blends well with dusty shrubs. While they occasionally take flight for short distances, boy can they run. They have been clocked at speeds of up to 26 miles an hour or 42 kilometers per hour, the fastest on record for any flying species. When they run, they place their head and tail parallel to the ground and use their tail as a rudder to change direction. We've had them the odd time in our backyard here in Baja but I've not yet found a way to entice the little rascals with food. However, I do know that they like human chow because I saw one hanging around a wee fast food tent 
where the cook was throwing out scraps near the Cabo airport. These monogamous birds uh, lay three to six eggs in thorny platform nests lined with everything from grasses to feathers to snake skins. And yes, roadrunners do kill and eat rattlesnakes, usually working in pairs with one distracting the serpent while the other one moves in for the kill. But they mainly subsist on a diet of insect spiders and any small creatures they can catch. The oldest roadrunner to date is seven years old. They're one of my favorite birds here down here in Mexico, always giving me a thrill whenever they dart across the road in front of me. Beep, beep. Well, this episode is E for Eastern Meadow, like true rock stars of the grasslands. It's a tad too cold for them here right now, but if you live further south in the States, you might catch a glimpse of them. If you happen to live in the area where Western and Eastern Meadow Larks overlap, there are a couple of things that you can look for to distinguish them. Eastern meadowlarks males have a, a rather distinct V-shaped black marking on their chest and western meadowlarks it's more like a necklace, it's a little bit more spread out. But of course there are always exceptions, so if you can't figure out which one it is, listen to their songs, they are rather distinct. Eastern meadowlarks sound like they belong in a jazz club, whereas western meadowlarks have more of a country twang. Even though they're called meadow larks, they are not larks at all. They belong to the blackbird family, but they're not too crazy about hanging out with their loud cousins, common grackles and red-winged blackbirds. Their diet is insects, bugs and some seeds. Have they ever stopped by for a snack in your backyard? When it comes to real estate, meadow larks are not really into high rises. They're all about ground floor living. They build cup shaped nests on the ground. And that's one of the reasons why their population is declining. So some of the things you can do to help protect them, keep your cats inside. They're not too crazy about those predators. And if you have nice lawn, skip the chemicals. Meadow larks prefer naturally seasoned insects. Well, that's it. That's all for now. Enjoy all the holiday activities. It is a wonderful time of the year. I'll catch you all in two weeks.